I've done a lot of boudoir photography over the years, both with myself as the model and with models or clients as models. For Valentine's Day, I typically do a more in-depth project. It's not typically a simple shoot. And as Valentine's Day is right around the corner, I asked you all for your questions about boudoir photography. And I got a ton of responses. And I mean, that's why I've done so much of it. It is a topic that a lot of photographers struggle with. In this case, I was looking for one topic that I could build an interesting project around, something like I normally do. But instead of that one project emerging, I was surprised to see two relatively simple questions pop up over and over again. And those questions were one, how do I get my wife or significant other to do a boudoir shoot with me? And two, how do you slash I get inspiration for a shoot? So I will be breaking this down into a two part series. In this video, I will discuss with some delicacy how to approach your significant other about a boudoir shoot. And in a video next week, I will discuss inspiration. In both, I have pulled photos from my archive of past boudoir projects with myself or with models, but also I did a shoot to supplement my answer today, actually. It's a little bit offbeat in terms of boudoir, but I will explain how it fits in when we come to it. Before we go any further, a commercial break from me. I have announced my next photography tour. It is to Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks. It is coming up very soon in May of 2020. We have photographers coming, we have non-photographer spouses coming, but we do have a couple of spots left. I will put a link up above and in the description to where you can learn more about it. I hope you can join us. So the question of the day has been, popular in my inbox for years. And it is, how do I get my wife or significant other to do a boudoir shoot with me? And this is a tough question because there are a variety of reasons for someone not wanting to do a boudoir style shoot. Now, I know a few of the reasons from communicating with you all over the years. Sometimes the significant other is nervous about putting themselves out there in a way that they may not have before or they're insecure about how they look in some way, or they just don't wanna have sexy photos of them out there. The idea of it just makes them uncomfortable. And like I said before, there are a variety of reasons. Everyone is different, but those are some of the most common things that I've heard. So I feel that I have to say one thing here before I share my advice. Do not ever pressure someone into this whether they be a significant other or a model or a client, this can be a very personal thing. It can be triggering for a number of reasons. So whatever you do, have a little bit of empathy just because you don't understand or agree with the reasons that someone may not want to do sexy photos does not mean that those reasons are not valid. If your significant other really doesn't want to do this, you need to respect that and lay off the lecture over. <laughs> I do have some advice on how to communicate about it. Keep in mind that I have never had to approach my significant other about a shoot like this, but I am a woman and I do understand the concerns. So I assume if you are watching this, you aren't sure if your significant other will be enthusiastic about a boudoir shoot. Maybe they'll be skittish. So you will need to approach this with delicacy but honesty, ask your significant other if they would consider it, but tell them why you want to do it, how fun you think it would be and how you love X, Y, or Z about them. And you want to showcase it or whatever the reason is. You might ask if it would be okay for you to gather together some example images to show what you mean. I think sometimes the first thought after you hear the term boudoir is, Playboy. The idea of being very naked <laughs> and that isn't necessarily the case. I have done plenty of photos where I or the model was nearly completely covered up, but the suggestion of nudity or lingerie was there. Being able to set expectations that way, or even being collaborative about finding these examples is helpful. 
And we'll get back to inspiration and examples later in this video, but finding those examples, including examples for wardrobe, in fact, I have a video where I discuss just that, the entire video, finding those examples to share or finding them together will make sure everyone is comfortable with the outcome. So in looking at wardrobe and putting together the shoot, you have all sorts of options, some of which I discussed in that wardrobe video that I mentioned a moment ago. Others I'll talk more about next week, but to make your significant other comfortable, you may need to broaden your idea of what boudoir looks like. For my own photo project this year, I thought, if I was uncomfortable taking photos in my underwear, I know, don't laugh, obviously I'm not, <laughs> but if I was, maybe I'm skittish about having my photo taken in general. I know, again, laugh. <laughs> How would I create a project to fit within those guidelines and make myself comfortable, but still kind of have a sexy spin to it? So I came up with an idea that would take me out of the bedroom and out of wearing lingerie and keep it somehow sexy. I put on some running clothes, but really it could be anything for your subject. I went with a festive red, I wore a low cut sports bra and tights, I felt good and comfortable in these clothes, but you know, I still had some cleavage showing and I tried to make some somewhat sultry faces at the camera. Taking the show into the forest also took some of the pressure off just because I wasn't like in a bedroom. And last, you need to be comfortable with this type of photography. Something that is interesting is that I got a lot of questions in email and private message and the inquirer wanted to make sure that I wouldn't say their name in my video. So my question is, if you feel uncomfortable with boudoir photography, how is your subject gonna be comfortable? So my tip here is to get comfortable so that your significant other will have confidence that you know what you're doing and that you are comfortable with it so that they can be. Now, the things I have discussed in this video, my suggestions may seem simple to some of you, but they aren't so obvious to others. I wouldn't have received this question so many times if it was obvious to everyone how to approach this topic with their spouses. But I think it is really cool that a lot of you want to use your photography as a way to connect with your spouse or your significant other. And I hope that I've given you some ideas of how to communicate and to lay the groundwork for a boudoir or boudoir inspired photo shoot. And next week we will move into inspiration, how to gain inspiration for this type of photo project. I have done many very different setups in different environments for boudoir. So in the video next week, I will pull from my own archives, but I'll also share where I have gotten some of my ideas in the past, from location to styling to posing. So like this video if you found it helpful, and I hope you subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications so that you will know when my videos go live, like the one next week. And follow me on social media. You can find the links to all of the different platforms in the description, along with a few of my past videos on boudoir photography, like that wardrobe one I talked about. And of course, a link to find out more about my next photo tour is down there. It will have nothing to do with boudoir photography, but it will be a good time and a really good way to learn and to exercise your photography skills in a beautiful environment. And that's it for today, everybody. Thanks for watching.